Hey guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. It is once again time for Shop Tour. Um, got a few really fun, exciting things going on in the shop, and I got my new calendar. So um, if we jump over here to February, uh, you'll see Dagan Crouch. Uh, he's racing these ATVs, and he's actually the grandson of my next door neighbor. And so I probably talked about this before, but I sponsor him. He and his dad come over and do some dyno time, and I uh, kind of sponsor them for that. He's a good kid. He's in high school, and sounds like he's going to go do some pro quad racing next year. So that's pretty exciting for him. Um, but here we are, January 26th. Last full week in January, and we are moving forward. So let's get right into it. So got Doug Weaver's car up on the lift, and have the engine installed and it really is looking good. I love the way that this new powder coating on the valve cover looks and uh, got some headers that are freshly ceramic coated. It really uh, does a lot of good things. So keep some heat out of under the engine compartment and also protects your expensive header investment. So need to get it flipped around get it on the scales, do a little corner weight and alignment, and then get it on the dyno because he will be here in just under two weeks to pick it up to go down to Circuit of the Americas. Um, for those of you that don't know Doug Weaver, he's actually a Canadian. So he's uh, recently retired and he's got time to come down, pick up the car and go another 11 hours to Austin, further away from his house. And uh, we're actually looking really good. Got the motor running and, and uh, Everything's looking good so far. Brand new engine. In the meantime, we've got a complete explosion of Camaro over here. So, we've got a new engine going into the car. Um, these cars are really cool because by the time you pull the bodies off of them, you can see the nose is sitting over here. It's just attached by these four points that connect into the frame and you can actually adjust these so that the body lines all fit really well and takes the amount of downforce uh, that this nose puts into the chassis. But it also enables me to be able to get right into this. So these are all solid mounted. You can see these mounts here that bolt from the engine straight into the frame. And then the, uh, the bell housing for the transmission is actually bolted in solid too. So these drive lines are solid, solid bolted in. Why are we changing this engine? Here's our tip of the day. Here's the old engine here, guys. So everything was cool. Went down to the track and apparently the display for what gear he's in wasn't working. Now that really has nothing to do with this engine change, but it kind of freaked him out a little bit. Um, we'll talk about that in a second, but he went ahead and went out on track during the test day and at some time during the session, um, the oil pump belt came off. So these are dry sump pumps. You're running from the crankshaft directly to here. We have never had a dry sump pump belt come off of one of these engines, but it did. And when that happens, you lose all oil pressure immediately, zero. Tip of the day. When your oil pressure light goes to zero and your light comes on and it says, warning, no oil pressure, push in the clutch and shut the ignition off. That's what you do. Whether it's getting hot, whether you have no oil pressure, oil pressure, whatever. Steve unfortunately made the mistake of going ahead and driving it on in with zero oil pressure for about 45 seconds to a minute. So the engine is not blown up, but after running an engine with no oil pressure for that amount of time, the engine builder, PME, performance motor engines, no, pro motor engines, that's what it is, PME stands for. They said, no, nope, can't run this engine anymore. So they had a very short time at uh, Sebring. So this engine is out. We're actually going to transfer some of the pieces over to the engine number three over here so that he actually has a spare. He did not have a spare engine with him, and so they loaded up and came home. Um, the main issue that I found with uh, why the dash wasn't working 
There's actually a sensor on the back of the transmission with a barrel valve because it's a sequential and it comes up and around and actually plugs in here under uh, in the engine compartment. So the guys that rebodied the car didn't realize that when they had the firewall off and so that plug was actually inside the car laying under the MSD boxes over here and they didn't have it plugged in. So the interesting thing that I figured out is when that is not plugged in and this MoTeC does not realize what gear this car is in, it will not auto blip and it will, obviously it will not tell you what gear it's in. It was actually stuck in what they thought it was stuck in reverse and that screws the MoTeC up. Yes, you can still drive it that way, but then you have to self blip it and you have to know what gear you're in like most race cars that I've ever driven. But Anyway, it's kind of cool to be able to get to all of this real easy. You can see how intricate um, the exhaust system is on this car. Uh, the, the header actually on the driver's side comes around the back of the engine. And then here's all the bits and pieces, but then it kind of does a... The passenger side does a loop-de-loop -loop so that the overall length of the two primaries are equal. But this is three inch primaries on each side into a big six inch muffler. If you've never heard one of these cars on the track, they are just amazing. So it's all pretty easy to get to once you get everything off. So you can see I've got the under tray off, the tunnel covers off, the side pod is off. It's really a good thing that I've got all this room to tear this car apart like this. So that has actually worked out really, really well. Uh, BMW wise, I am just chipping away at pulling decals off. So you can see I've got most of the hood taken off now. I'm going to get into the rest of it because obviously like we were talking about um, last week, I've got a whole new livery coming down the pipe that we're going to be working on. So car's not going to be going racing until April anyway. So we've got some time, but we need to keep chipping away. Uh, in the meantime, you can see Bob Shader's 370 is up on the lift. I'm actually working on wheel offset because since this car has been run, we're now allowed a 10 inch wide front wheel instead of a nine inch wide. And so getting a 10 inch wide wheel to clear the caliper and fit up under the fender is a little bit of a tight fit. So I want to make sure that we get the right wheels and get the offset just right. I have enjoyed having this car back in the shop again because it's got a lot of the cool things that we did to it back in 2017 when it was built. For instance, um, I built this and it's still in really good shape. This is oval, mandrel bent oval tubing. So it's still three inches in diameter, but it flattens out here. And I've actually got some of this on my BMW as well. The reason we do this is because it gives you a little more ground clearance. And so this is all still looking good. It's still got the diff cooler and all of the good stuff on it. And so just kind of analyzing the car, it's going to need a full prep, but right now we need to be getting the, the uh, Camaro ready to go to Austin, Circuit of the Americas in two weeks and get uh, Doug Weaver's car done and those will get out of here and I can focus on other engines that I need to be building, waiting on, still waiting on a few bits and pieces for Jake's engine, but we're, I think we're on good timeline with that. Uh, as long with, along with Mike Froze stuff. Do have some uh, body work sitting here for Bill Hingston who's coming to pick it up to, uh, later today. Um, the nose looks pretty good. I think these fenders are uh, some partial rejects from Perry. I mean it's obviously they can be fixed and used. It's just going to take a little bit of body work. So uh, if any of you guys watched the F production race from the runoffs you know that poor Mr. Hingston met the tire wall at least once and had an unfortunate incident with uh, Mark Weber as well. So he's got a little bit of body work to do. Um, but he's, from what I understand, he's doing a good job getting the car prepped for the season. So this will be his, probably his last piece he really needs to, to get going. But uh, basically, we're going to get this explosion taken care of here in the next week. The, it's possible the car will be done and gone. There's a couple other things that I've still got to do. We're going to be putting some bump springs, inner bump springs on the shocks so that this nose in the, of the car does not bottom out above 150 miles an hour. There's so much downforce with this car now. 
we need some little springs that uh, should help prevent some of that. But we're looking good. It might look like a bit of a mess right now, but I know where everything goes. So we'll keep at it. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, we're just hard at it here in the shop, keeping busy, fixing cars. You guys just keep racing them and breaking them for me because I'll be here to help you out. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great week. Appreciated all the comments from last week. Hopefully uh, got some questions answered. Uh, I did actually have a guy uh, interested in some of Perry's body work, so I sent Perry's information on to him as well. So always interesting to uh, see the comments. Guys, have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you real soon. Take care.